Hey friends, we finally have some decent weather so I'm able to tinker on the D2 uh, 5J dozer. Um, I finally got it here. It was a long journey. It was about an eight hour drive up to Florence, um, empty with the trailer, maybe eight and a half. Uh, the road was sinking all over the place. Like probably for like an hour, I was driving about 35 miles an hour up and back. So on the way back, uh, this thing's got to be pretty heavy. I mean, Wiki says it only weighs about 7,000 with no implements, just the tractor and track. So um, I'm thinking with the blade, the canopy, and the winch, it's got to be pushing 10,000. I'm, I'm thinking around 10. I don't know. If you guys think you have a better um, idea, feel free to drop a comment down below. Um, but this hill to get home um it's pretty steep i believe it's like eight or nine percent grade it's it's like steep as they can make the roads like legally um i had to go up it in second gear i was pretty surprised because usually with this dodge i mean they are kind of sluggish compared to the new trucks uh the 24 valves but usually even when i got a pretty heavy load i can go up that hill in third gear um and this this truck has 354 gears with the six speed so I had to hit that hill in second gear with this dozer on there. And uh, I was about 900 uh, EGTs. So it's got to be pretty heavy when I get a chance and I can get around to some cat scales, which in my area, uh, they're super far. So I don't know when I'll be able to get to that. But if I can, I'll come back to the video and let you know how much it weighs. But like I said, if you guys know how, if you think you know how much it weighs, drop a comment down below. Alrighty, so... Since the roads were sinking, I was trying to get it fired before I bought it, but all the, the road conditions on uh, 101 uh, going north on Oregon on the coast, um, the roads just so tore up. I ended up getting there. I only had about an hour of daylight, and the guy uh, had a couple different excavators. Um, unfortunately, he didn't want me to record, so he did let me take a couple pictures, but we had to load it up with the excavator. Um, he had, we had a 50,000 pound Hyundai excavator and that wouldn't do it. Um, something wrong with this hydraulics. Then he had a 70,000 pound Mitsubishi excavator and that one hardly picked it up and loaded it on the trailer. Uh, I got a little picture of that and I'll, I'll show everybody that picture. So we finally got it loaded and yeah, it was a long drive back, 10 plus hours to get back. Um, the hills on the West coast on 101 are really steep i don't know if anyone from back east if you ever decide to make a tour over here you should definitely take that drive it's it's uh, one of the most beautiful drives you can take i, I believe in the united states um, just all kinds of different trees mountains and ocean um, it's definitely worthwhile to take that drive but um yeah and there's a bunch of towns with the speed limits 20 miles an hour these little towns that you drive through and a bunch of speed traps and actually when I was coming down, the alternator went, when the alternator went out, um, I was heading into this little town just, uh, north. I don't remember the name of the town, but it was just north of the border of Oregon, about 40 miles. And I uh, turned off the heater so I could drive to the parts store and then hopefully source the alternator in the morning. And, uh, so I turned off the heater, uh, the defroster so I can make it another couple miles because my battery is literally just draining. And this truck has a pretty powerful lift pump. So I was like, shoot, I don't know if I'm going to make it. So I was freaking out about that. And I wasn't paying attention. And I uh, believe uh, he said I was doing 40 something. Um, and it was a 20 mile an hour zone. There was not even any schools around. I was like, wow, I really got to go slow through some of these towns. And anyways, it was a speed trap. And the guy pulled me over and I told him my situation. And he uh, quickly let me go. And uh I really appreciate that. And uh, I went to the parts store, started the truck. It ran for 30 minutes. The voltage was staying the same. So I was like, shoot, you know, maybe uh, maybe my gauge is faulty. Uh, so I started driving back and then about 80 miles north of Eureka. Um, I can tell my power is starting to dim. My lights are starting to dim, flicker. I'm like, shoot, I guess the alternator of voltage regulator definitely went out. So we finally, I made it to a rest stop north of Kinleyville, or McKinleyville, the name is. 
and it's about 15 miles north of McKinleyville, so it died. So I had a second set of batteries that I brought to start the dozer, and they were just old batteries. They only had 600 cranking amps each. They were just toast, but there should have been plenty to, to start this pony motor on this cat. So I hooked those up, wouldn't start. Then I cleaned the terminals, tried again, wouldn't start. So I was like, shoot. I uh, hooked up one of the dead batteries that I took out and jumped it um, with the two other batteries. Finally started. So we uh, jetted all the way down to uh, McKinleyville, um, O'Reilly's, and I just hardly parked there, and the batteries were just, just about done. I had a couple of volts left on them. And I had to unplug the trailer brakes, which was an ideal, so I could make it. Um, I believe this trailer I have didn't come with the battery on it, so it's running directly off the truck. So I think that was really hard on the alternator, and it was on its uh, last leg anyways, so alternator ended up going out on me so we had to go to uh i used two sets of batteries to get to the part store and there was auto zone o'reilly's there they had to order the alternator i needed they didn't have it i asked them if they could deliver and i guess o'reilly's does not deliver uh parts store to store on the weekend so i was like shoot my only option was to buy brand new batteries so i bought brand new batteries put them in and then I went to Eureka O'Reilly's. Thank goodness they hooked me up there because uh, they had the alternator in stock. And I went there and slapped it in. And I was like hoping it's not the voltage regulator. So I went ahead and got the alternator in. We started it up and bam, it was charging. I was so grateful because Eureka is like two hours from here. So And it's a lot of steep hills and, and stuff like that. And I really need my exhaust brake and my trailer brakes to be working, if you know what I mean. So, everything's working. We had lunch, sat in the parking lot for an hour just to make sure uh, the alternator was for sure working and it was kicking on and off. Voltage was going up and down. Did not have my voltmeter on me, so I couldn't uh, diagnose the system. So, I was kind of just playing it by ear and watching the gauges. And, uh, yeah, we ended up making it back, finally. But we've had like three or four days of rain. After I got here, I had to unhook at the bottom of the driveway because there's no way I'm going to get up my driveway with this dozer on this trailer. I have a really steep driveway. And um, last time I tried to haul my backhoe up this driveway, I just almost made it up there. But I chewed my tires up pretty bad and I learned my lesson. So I'm just going to hopefully I can fire up this dozer and walk it up to the house and start working on it up there and be a little closer but if not we're just going to keep tinkering on it down here in the wood yard so the thing is not getting spark um all the fluids are great on the dozer uh the transmission fluid looked great that's that pretty much sold me on it it's like it had good transmission oil it's like sweet i can i can work with that the pedals are a little wore down the steering clutches i'm guessing uh or the brake clutches are probably pretty wore out because how wore out the pedals are unless someone went in there and replaced them and um the injection pump oil looked great no water in that um yeah everything looked good i checked the pony motor oil looked great it was black but it had no smell of gas in it so that's huge for me because i hear a lot of guys don't turn the gas off like they're supposed to and it just fries the pony motors because it dilutes that oil in the, in the crankcase so i was looking at the pony motor it looks like someone unwired the starter uh the on and off switch so, which is a good thing because you don't need those you just turn off the gas anyways so he said it was running seven months ago when he bought it the guy got it fired and, and they got it loaded and unloaded on a trailer and uh, then it pretty much just sat so the only bad thing is there's a little bit of water in the engine oil so I'm hoping it's not a blown head gasket. If it is, I'll have to see how much damage it is and if it's going to be a parts dozer or not. Um, I might end up just swapping all this uh, forestry stuff to a farm tractor because sometimes I do see farm tractors around here in the valley, especially around Sacramento and uh, those areas. Um, there's a lot of these D2s laying around that are in pretty good shape and it almost might be easier to do that so we'll see what i can find I'm, I'm i'm thinking this thing will fire up the guy put a new exhaust on it and i'm guessing that it it just got a little bit of rainwater in the exhaust because it was still pretty thick in the oil 
either that or it blew the head gasket and the guy parked it and sold it. So I guess we'll see. So we're going to work on the Magneto and I've been following Sasquatch uh, on YouTube. Uh, make sure to follow him because he knows a lot about these D2 dozers. And if it wasn't for him, I would have never bought one of these things. Um, I didn't even know that you could still get parts for these little D2s from uh, Caterpillar. So I actually called Cat, uh, called Peterson Cat, and they hooked it up with some filters. Uh, they're supposed to be here tomorrow. So today I'm hoping to get Spark on the pony motor, see if I can get the pony motor to fire. Then the next step is to drain the oil, get all that water out of there. And I might just inspect the oil filter to see if there's water in there. Um, if the oil looks good where the oil filter is, I'm guessing um, it's probably not a head gasket. The water got in through the pipe at some point, which hopefully that's that's it. Because <laughs> if this thing has a blown head gasket, it's going to probably be a while before I can get this thing going. Obviously. So, all right, let's get into it. So let's start tearing into this Magneto and cleaning them up. I watched on Sa Sasquatch's um, channel, him and his dad um, refurbishing these Magnetos. And that does look kind of complex, a little over my head. But I couldn't find anything online, like uh, complete rebuilds. Uh, I'd rather just buy a refurbished one or have someone else do it. Because it seems like there's a lot of little parts in there. And He says sometimes you have to recharge the, mag the magnet in there too. So... I might have to go get my voltmeter and test that stuff. I'm not the best at electrical. I'm more of like a bolt-on guy. So if you give me the part, I can get it on there. Uh, I don't really like tearing into engines and stuff, but I can rebuild um, a lot of hydraulics, and I'm pretty good at doing maintenance and stuff. So, All right, let's get into tearing apart this magneto. Now that we don't have any rain, that's going to get all over inside there. And hopefully it's not plumb full of water and completely ruined. And I'm hoping since he said he fired it like seven months ago, the timing should be good on it. Unless, unless the guy was fibbing. All right, let's get into it. So as you can see, looks like the sprockets are pretty good. The hour meter says 1900 hours, but I don't know how accurate it is. So undercarriage is looking pretty good. So the end of the VIN says SP and I did a bunch of research. The only thing I could find is it came with oversized rollers. And a couple people were saying that it has a long, uh, this might have a longer third and fourth gear. So you can see, this looks pretty good, I, I believe. We'll see how loose the tracks get once I get it to actually track. But yeah, the rollers are pretty solid, but could be rust too. So but I think uh, all these pretty, Sturdy, I believe uh, it looked like it had a bunch of chokers on the back. So I think a logger used to own it. They welded that on the front of the blade, which that could be suspect because I know with the international dozers, you're not really supposed to uh, skid backwards with them. The transmissions are kind of weak. I don't know about these cats. Uh, I guess I'll figure it out. But hopefully these ones don't have a weak reverse because that could mean he was skidding logs in reverse a lot. So I hope not. And it's got this custom Carco Model A winch on it, which I usually see a H2 uh, heister on these. And uh, it looks like he got the cable reeled in all the way, so I'm guessing that works the way uh, it's seeing right now. But you can see, I think it, I think the seals are out on it, or it might have a slow leak. I guess we'll figure it out. All right, let's get into the pony motor as you can see this was pretty suspect these pedals are pretty wore out so brake clutches might be on their way out but the gear oil looked great in the transmission so if there was water in this transmission I probably would have just passed on this oh yeah I actually have to take this off I forgot about that tie this so the wind wouldn't take it off while I was driving. Yeah. 
Not sure how Sasquatch, uh, does all this wrenching with one hand. That guy's a pro. I cannot wrench with one hand. I'm just too clumsy. This clutch is kind of stiff. Hopefully that's full reach, full motion of range. Engaged, but then it kind of, I guess we'll see when I get it fired. Uh, well. I like using PB Blaster. Pretty much PB Blast everything. This last one's pretty stubborn, but I just got it. I better not get those ignition wires mixed up. That might throw the timing off just a tad. Looks like they crisscross. Linkage off here. Well, that's pretty hard to get to. Not gonna lie. This is starting to feel Japanese already. Let's see if I can get my needle nose with a really long needle on them. Linkage is really hard to get to. Really long needle nose. Hopefully this will do the trick here. I'm hoping somebody rebuilt this carburetor at some point. This one doesn't have a clip. Yeah, 
about this lot right out of there. There you go, caterpillar. Would not work if that was a Matthew Ferguson, I guarantee you that. Okay, so the This spins kind of like that. Oh, it seems Okay, so I gotta take off this linkage here. Cause it's, there's no way to get that cap off. So I should be able to get that cap off now. Okay, I got the cap off. One of these, this spring seems good. This spring seems a little suspect. The middle spring's working. Okay, I'm just gonna blast this with brake cleaner. It actually looks in pretty good shape, I think. It's funny because I like working on diesel because I don't have to deal with this stuff. And now I have a diesel and it has an ignition on it. This one's not pushing all the way out, so. I am going to rewatch uh, Sasquatch's and uh, Senior rebuild in theirs just so I can get a refresh on this because I, I usually just buy new stuff when I run them and stuff like this but I have a feeling if I can find it, it's going to be pricey.
sure if you guys can see anything. Okay, so sprayed this out pretty good. We got some crud right here. Looks like there's a hole right there. I didn't notice that. Hey friends, so I um, the other two springs look pretty good, but one of them wasn't quite coming out all the way, so I bent it out just a tad and uh, cleaned it out really good and uh yeah they seem like they work pretty good after that and i'm just lightly sanding them just to clean them up i'm not really taking any material off at all <laughs> Okay, this one was stuck. I don't know if that would stop it from sparking. You think at least one of them would spark. Hoping that magneto's still good. Or the the mag in there, whatever the thing that makes the power. I don't know the name of it. I ordered a gasket kit, a uh, maker kit. Don't have it yet, but That is good that it had a gasket on there. I was told that most of these will not have the gasket if someone's been in there. Hopefully keep that water from building up in there, so work for now. I'm hoping this... Uh, I almost forgot to get this hole. Spread out. I just want to get this hole. More water can get in there. Hopefully, it's not going to touch anything. Okay, I'll let this sit a second. So, oh, kind of hard. All this stuff takes forever. I'm not going to have like a gap from the gasket, so hopefully it doesn't mess with like the timing or anything. With my luck, it messes with the timing or something. Okay, so I'm going to get some of the sandpaper, and I'm going to go up in the points and clean it out a little bit. Spray it out again to make sure no metal or anything like that's going to grind up the seals from cleaning up the points. I'm guessing they have corrosion, and uh, that's why it's not sparking. Either that or the, the mag is just completely dead, so... All right, I'll give you an update here in a second. I'm not sure if you can see that magneto, the points. It looks like they got a ton of corrosion on them. So let me get that cleaned off. Hopefully it'll start sparking now. That thing took a real dinky battery. So I just need to turn the motor over so I can open up the points to clean them. So I don't want to take extra material off that I don't don't need to.
So I got the points open um, so I could get some sandpaper in there. Couldn't really fit my arm and the camera in there, so I didn't get that shot, but I ended up getting them pretty clean, and it took a while because I could only move the sandpaper just a little bit at a time. Okay, I'm going to put this thing on my jigger back on. I got the points clean. They were completely covered in corrosion, so I'm hoping that was it. The coil looks like, or the magneto, uh, whatever you want to call it. It was definitely, looks like it's got some heat to it at some point. And uh, I put the ohm meter on it at 20K on ohms. And it it's just getting a little over 3 ohms. So it's, it's a little on the weak side. So hopefully it'll work. All the little uh, pieces in there seem like they're connected still. Um, all those little tiny springs, whatnot. And I have gasket sealant on this, which isn't ideal. But I just want to see if this... Engine's gonna have a blown head gasket not then it doesn't have a blown head gasket all we'll start putting some money into it. The wire won't let me get in here. I'm gonna try to slide this straight on so I don't mess with those springs in there. Okay. It looked like somebody was in there and they already partially rebuilt it or something. So. Uh, okay. Three of them are really easy to get to, and then the top left one is really hard. Gotta be careful with that guy. So yeah, it looked pretty good in there besides the Magneto. I'm probably gonna have to get a new one because it looked like it, maybe when they recharged it, they didn't do it right because it looked like it had some heat on it. So I'm going to have to try to source one of those. It's not getting sparked, but it says uh, most coils, magnetos, uh, need 3 to 4.5 ohms to work. And it's a little over 3. So I'm hoping it'll spark now because the points are just completely corroded. So I'm guaranteed it wasn't getting... Any power through there. I'm gonna look at the camera and I'll be able to tell a little better, but I looked at it with the mirror too and it looked like it was really corroded. Green looking. There's a little hole that something rubbed on it. And it got a little hole in the bottom, at least it wasn't on the top. Maybe you put a hole in there so the water would get out of there, so I don't know, it's weird. I sealed it up, I don't want water getting in there. I'm uh, pretty close to the coast, this area, so the fog and everything. I don't want that to get in there, even though it's on the bottom. Coils look pretty good. I mean, the spark plug wires look great.
That's pretty snug. I want to be able to get it off. So, okay, let's see if it'll spark before we put the linkage back on. Something for zigzag. That actually looked pretty good in there, so those have to be getting contact. Okay, friends. So. We got some auto light spark plugs. That's all that Napa had in stock. And we got this, I'm gonna modify it. So it's just hardly getting sparks. So I bought some brand new plugs. Napa only had one of these eight millimeter wires. So the longer cord might make it spark even worse. Hope not. Hoping this will get spark with the regular gap. Let's see what she does. just got a really bad spark that magneto is going out so and we have spark with hardly any spark plug gap this clamp goes in there come on I'll put it on real quick Okay, we got spark with really close. The spark plug got almost touching. And this is the oil, looks great. Sounds a little like gas, but not too bad. So there's some water in there for sure. So I'm gonna clean that out. Let that drain out at least. We got some rust right here. Yuck. Okay, I'm trying to drain this. Kind of a caterpillar filter. There's that much water in there. Uh, 
Okay, I don't have much space left on my camera, so I have to put the linkage in for the choke. Um, it's right here. Uh, it's not too big of a deal, so I'm gonna do that while the tank is draining. Pretty nasty. Ooh. I'm gonna flush it out with some new gas. Cross my fingers. Lighting. There we go. I'm just, just not picking this up. <laughs> Second flush. Might try to run it after that drains. Okay, so we got the plugs in with the tiny spark plug gap so they will get spark. I got the linkage set up. Oh. I still got to put this bolt in. Okay, got that in. One-handed style, Sasquatch style. <laughs> And if this pony fires up, next step is to, I'm going to drain the oil on the engine and the pony. And tomorrow I'm supposed to have some filters. We'll put the new filters in and see if this thing will fire up and then we will check the see if it's bubbling in here to see if it's a bomb head gasket or not. Uh, I did not see oil or water where the oil filter was so I'm pretty sure it just went in through the stack. I'm gonna finish flushing out this nasty stuff. There's a little bit of rust in there it's actually not too bad. There you go. Uh, it's not completely rusted out. Might be able to save this tank. This was the nasty stuff I got out of it. Okay, let's see if this thing will fire up. I'm gonna put the filters back on. Best looks a lot better than it did. It's clearing up at least. <sighs> the other stuff was like half water. <sighs> this is the most suspect radiator cap I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm just gonna flush it out. Should use the distilled water, but this is just uh, regular water. completely empty well it's definitely got some oil in it I don't know about that well it's like red looking stuff oh no <laughs> It's definitely gonna need a flush. Well, work 
like it's the first year. Okay, that's open. Hopefully it's not flooding in and out. Sweet, we got the pony motor going. I have no idea what this red stuff is. Weird. Well, 
guess I'll figure it out. <laughs> well, now we got the pony motor warmed up. I'm going to flush the oil out. And we turn off the gas so the carburetor's dry. That's a giant drain plug. I don't know if it's a drain plug. I'm guessing so. the damage is on this thing I believe the water just went in through that pony freeze plug Ooh, it's not good. Ooh. Well, hopefully it's okay, man. That's a lot of water. Hopefully it's just the bottom of the oil pan that was full of water. Well, hopefully it's not a parts dozer. The Perkins was plumb full of uh, water, my backhoe when I got it. And I let it soak in PB Blaster. Overnight I sprayed the, all the cylinders and valves and everything and then came back the next day and got it fired. Okay, finally stopped dripping water. I'm guessing that was at least a gallon and a half of water. Oil, yay. Okay, round two. Eee, a lot of water. Okay, friends, we filled up six gallons of containers so far. Yeah, I'm about to run out of hard drive space. Oh. 
I'll try to take this plug out, see if it's a magnet or something. Seven gallons of oil and water. Well, maybe about eight gallons or nine gallons with the water that I just let go on the ground. That's crazy. Okay, friends, so we got the pony motor started and I turned off the gas so it wasn't flooded. Um, that pony motor definitely has a weak coil in it because I had to make that spark plug gap so small to get those spark plugs to spark but at least it's running for now and I'm gonna let this oil drain overnight and we'll see you on episode 2 and we'll see where the dozer is at